in this lecture, we're going to introduce the concept of the second law of thermodynamics and the uh, variable called entropy. Uh, if we have a pressure volume diagram, uh, then temperature 1 and temperature 2 are separated on this pressure volume diagram. We also have adiabats A1 and adiabats A2. Um, and that would be the pressure volume combination uh, that would uh, essentially an air parcel would have if you lifted it or compressed it adiabatically. And then superimposed on this, we can actually have, recall that an adiabatic process is one that is reversible. So if we start off at this position right here, at this initial pressure and volume and this temperature, and then we add heat to it, uh, we can change from adiabat 2 to adiabat 1, and then uh, we can move along that adiabat, dry adiabatically, changing the pressure uh, and the volume uh, and uh, temperature uh, without adding more heat energy to the system. And then if you want to get back to the original adiabat, you need to then lose that amount of energy Q2, and then you can move back down the adiabat to your original location. And um, in this particular case, um, it's been shown that the amount of heat energy that is required to move between these two adiabats at temperature 1 uh, is equal to the amount of energy uh, difference that it takes to move between these adiabats at temperature 2. And this represents the, the difference in entropy between the two adiabats. Uh, and it also is the mathematical formulation of the second law of thermodynamics uh, which basically has to do with the maximum amount of work that can be done uh, by extraction of heat from a system. So we're going to define the, use the variable capital S uh, as entropy and the differential of that is going to be uh, related to the uh, change in the uh, diabetic heating or work, or diabetic heating term DQ uh, reversible uh, divided by temperature. Um, so this is the uh, maximum amount of heating that can occur in this system uh, in a reversible process. Um, and for a unit mass, we can do D, capital D, excuse me, lowercase ds is going to be equal to dq reversible over temperature. And that's our definition of entropy. And you can recall from the um, first law of thermodynamics that C sub P, uh, the dq is equal to C sub P dt minus alpha dp. Uh, and if we divide both sides by temperature, you get dq over t is equal to these quantities divided by temperature, and that by your definition is going to be uh, ds. And if you recall from the long derivation that we did for the equivalent potential temperature, c sub p dt over t is equal to this quantity. Uh, if we substitute this quantity into the, the quantity down here, the r d sub p uh, D, uh, dp over p term actually cancels with this one and you're left with this expression which is the change in entropy is equal to c sub p times the change in the potential temperature divided by the potential temperature. If we wanted to integrate that uh, we can get uh, the s uh, is going to be the integral of ds is going to be uh, times is equal to c sub p times the natural logarithm of the potential temperature plus a constant. And so for transformations in which entropy is constant, these are referred to as isentropic. And you can see clearly from up here that an isentropic process would be one in which the potential temperature does not change. Uh, so if d theta is equal to zero, the ds is going to be zero, uh, and there's no change in the isentrope. And thus, constant potential temperature processes, which were also coincidentally adiabatic, are isentropic. And by extension, adiabatic processes are by definition isentropic. Uh, 